good? Yep. All right. Well, to start off, I want to go over a little bit of an ecological footprint. We're going to answer some questions, just kind of like how we think the average person lives their life. And then from there, we'll see how many worlds actually we could, we need to survive based on how we're living. These are actually a lot of fun, and you can actually see what you can and can't do to help change or just monitor your life a little bit better to live a more sustainable life. So when we get started, how often do you eat animal-based products? How often do we think the average American eats beef, pork, chicken, fish, eggs, and dairy products? At least once a day. Once a day. Twice a day, probably. Twice a day. All right, so we'll move this bar up a little bit instead of occasionally, often, a few times a week, daily, almost daily, very often, meat daily. Daily for the dairy. Can I have milk for breakfast? No. <laughs> How much food do you eat is unprocessed, unpackaged, or locally grown? How many? How how do we think people do we eat, think people eat food locally grown, or do we think people just go and just buy processed food and don't really care? I think it's getting more popular to look at the locally grown or the organic mm -hmm. products. It's definitely getting more popular. It is, but if they're found in carrying, we do. But the thing, do you count bread? Thirty percent bread products that are baked locally. The one was where the wheat came from. Right? That, that's true. I, for this, I would count it. Okay, because that's twice a day probably for us. Okay. I think we'll go 40% sounds good? Yeah, okay, I'm okay. getting okay. more on that. Yeah. No, 40%. Which housing type best describes the average home? A freestanding, no running water. A freestanding, running water. A multi-story apartment. Duplex, row house, or building with two to four housing units. Or luxury condominiums. The last one is like a mansion, like a very, very fancy. Yeah, I think it'd be the last one. Running water. Yeah, we got running water. Yeah. Freestanding running water. That's a big one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hot and cold is helpful too. <laughs> yes. The what do we think the average construction used to build these homes are? Wood. 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 Around here, the whole yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that one. Around here, anyway. The average. How many people are in the average household and the size of the home? Two. Two for the average household? Yeah, for us. Unless Ben comes out, we get free food. <laughs> the size of a home. How big do we think normal homes are in square feet? Well, at least 1,500. At least 1,500 mm -hmm. for the average house? Yeah, yeah at least nowadays, yeah. Probably more than that. Yeah, they're pushing two now. But there's some smaller ones that go in that. So they keep the price down. Yeah, the tiny houses are huge. So do we want to meet in the middle and go like 1880? Because yeah. okay. some of them are getting up to two, some of them are staying a little smaller. Yeah, around us, the, the subdivision around us, it's going from very nice big ones to small. Garages are almost bigger. <laughs> yeah. And the people, do we want to stick with two or do we want to bump it up because we think that the, like the families out there. Really oh, if you're going by other, just, I was just doing two as us. Okay. If you're doing the other, then you got to get it up to most of the ones around us are at least four. At least four? Yeah. Okay. We can plug in four then. Do you have electricity in your home? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connect to the burning water. <laughs> How energy efficient is your home? Are the appliances from around 2000 to 2010, 2010 to 2020, older, newer? In my case, they're all in the late two, like 2018, 2020. Okay. I don't know. I would, I'd say 
15 probably. So 15? Okay. So for energy efficient then, we're going to go right about average because that is yeah. typical for the newer appliances from like around 2015, 2018. All right, once you get into like the 2020, that's when they start coming out with the uh, more electrical sustainable kinds of appliances. Right. And using smaller ones for some of those. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any renewable electrical sources attached to their house? Or do we think it's popular? Or is it up and coming still? Like solar panels, um, hy like hydrology systems where running water provides electricity. Oh my god. Around us, no. Nah. Nobody, nobody I've seen no arms I have. And we're probably about 100 homes out by us. So we'll go 12% based on the average, because there are some people who have them, but not there's not nearly enough. We could bump it down to 10 if we wanted. Do we want to do 10 or 15? I'd go 10 because I don't that, see, I don't even see much of it as somebody doing it. One of the neighbors in a different area. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about our power company. Our power company might uh, have uh, uh, somebody power might have a little bit of renewable energy. resources. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're we're yes. our, we're our Okay, well we can buy so they they would have since there's power companies out there, we'll bump it up a little bit. Because power companies are starting tr to transition to using renewable resources. How, this question is always fun. How, compared to your neighbors, how much trash do you generate? More or less than your neighbors? Less, I know. Less. We have no children. They have four or five. Our cans are full every week. Alright, so we will do less. How far do you travel by car or motorcycle each week? What do we think the average? There's miles underneath it. Oh yeah, but I can't read the miles. Miles underneath that, that's about 133 right now, it says. Now we think for the average person. What do we think the average person around here would drive? It wouldn't surprise me to hit the 133. Divide by seven. It's that much miles per day. You know, so if you live on the north side up in Town Hall, it's eight miles down the point. Yeah. One way so you're 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 north and that. Yeah, and you're, that's just the easy one in. Clover's mm -hmm. the same thing, eight miles up from down there. Yeah. Oh. Alright, so we'll yeah. bump it up a little bit then? Yeah, I would. And if you got two cars going, which is us. Yeah. So, so what do you want to bump it up to? Two hundred? It wouldn't surprise me a lot of them. I'd say 300. 300? Oh, yeah. Be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't either because I know our neighbors have to do a lot of chasing around with four kids. All right, we'll bump, we'll bump that up to <laughs> 300. Yes, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. All right, and motorcycle? Nah, not really so much, no, especially right now. Good. Unless you're in good. Somebody was <laughs> out this week. I saw a guy out on the week. I was like, what the hero? I saw a couple of people this week too, and like, because I drive a motorcycle, and like I was driving, I was driving with my girlfriend, and we're driving, 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 and I look over, and there's like three people on motorcycles driving on the highway, and I'm like, look, it's 40 degrees out, I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself right now? Not even that, the salt and sand, a record chain. Yeah. You drive the chain. All right. Big hurry. The average fuel efficiency of a vehicle. Do you think it's 34, about 34 miles to the gallon mm -hmm. for the average vehicle? Lower, mm -hmm. higher, mm -hmm. lower? Let's go down to 20, 24? 20. 20? Yeah, because you start, if you're average, you the neighbor has to pay what you're driving. Yeah, yeah. a couple of neighbors have some good sized pickup trucks. Diesel fuel, either one, they go yeah. through it. Big uh, how often do we think people carpool? Get together with friends to drive somewhere instead of two people driving to the same place separately? Like, if you're going out to eat with friends, do you drive separately or do you drive together? We always drive together. 
Judy Sushi, I, I right there. Someday Ben said Judy's in the back. Does the dog count? <laughs> the dog will count. Count. <laughs> <It's laughs> <the dog. laughs> I would say so. Not very much. Not very much? No, it's never more than two or less. Okay. 25. Does anyone use public transportation? If so, how often? And how far do you think people use public transportation to get? If you live in the city, you probably use the bus system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My mother used it until she was way in her late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Bus? Good. The bus stopped right at the end of the driveway. Technically, it didn't. It had to be like 50 feet beyond. But the guys were always nice to my oh, old mother. She would they stop right there to the driver. That's good. Yeah. And she got the ride for free. Ooh, that's really nice. You know, you know where the corner of the HH and Uber is? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, she'd get down there and she'd go in town. Now she wanted to get to Walmart, which is only a mile and a half away through the fields. That's where she went to grade school. But she had to go all the way into town, she'd do something in town, and then she'd ride the bus back around over. Walmart and then to come home. Hmm. All right. And the only reason the bus goes out to Walmart, two reasons. One, my mother, I'll brag about her, and two, the college students. Otherwise, the bus did not go to Walmart. Wow. It stopped on the corner of HH and Ara oh. because the bus came out of Stevens Point mm -hmm. and that was Clover. Mm -hmm. So it got changed, now it goes to Elba. I mean, on average, what do we think people fly each year? Do you think it's getting more popular, less popular? I think it's getting more popular again now. More popular again now? After yeah. COVID, people, people yeah, are wanting to visit places more, so yeah. they're cooked up at home the entire time. So, do you think people fly each year six hours or more? A year? More. More exactly. More Those that are doing it, got to be more, because if you go any distance, you're going to be at three hours just to get there. In the air. Okay. I'll tell you, a flight from here to California is about eight hours or so, a little under eight hours. Round trip. Round uh, to fly just there. Eight hours? Or no, round trip. Yeah, eight hours round, round trip. trip. I've made it enough times. <laughs> Back in the seventies, we did it faster than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's about eight hours round trip to fly to California. And back. Yeah. It's about twenty-seven hours to fly to Japan and back. So yeah, you're going through time zones then too. Yeah, that, that's where it gets really confusing. No, it isn't. You get home before you left. <laughs> that's really weird. You have to live the same day twice. Yes. <laughs> I've done it more than once in my life. Hey, me too. What branch of the service are you in? Marines. Ah, Navy. Nice. So, if this is how every single person lived, we would need 6.1 Earths to sustain every single person on this planet. That requires all our natural resources, everything we're using right now would be depleted by the 28th of February. Of the so, next year? Of this year. Oh, we're already done. Yep, if everyone lived that exact same, if everyone Wait, lived bro. that way, we would, the world would already be already used up all its natural resources. My name is Brandon Baby. I am a student here at Stevens Point, and I've done a lot of sustainable practices growing up. I grew up on a farm. We had a really big garden. We processed all our own meat, and we tried to live a very sustainable life. When growing up, I went to a grocery store maybe once or twice a year. Get flour. Sure. Yeah, just getting big bags and buying in bulk. Yeah. And that's the only thing we'd really go to a grocery store for. Other than that, we lived in a garden off the farm. We go fishing, hunting, for the outdoors. And then I got into college and I started learning more about everything. My buddy became an electrician and he started talking about all this power, all the power and how it works in households. And that really got me thinking, how can you live more sustainable lives with electricity, with water, 
with preserving the world and trying to keep the world the way it is while still living your life. So I put this program together. I went out and did my own research. I went around with my friend Mark, who's the electrician, and we went and compared older style houses to newer style houses and, seen, and saw how they conducted power. So we will get into that a little bit later. First, we're gonna talk about the, what Schneekly does and how they help provide more sustainable, what's the matter? more sustainable lives for everyone. In 2018, Schmeekly put up their solar panel yeah. up front, but before they put up that solar panel, they were using approximately 20 or 41,000 kilowatts an hour. That is an estimation for electrical units, and that's actually what you pay based on the meter. If an electrician comes to like look at your meter, like back in the day, an electrician would have to come out there, look at your meter, and be like, okay, this is what it is, this is what we're billing you. Now it's all on the computer, so they, don't, they can just send you the bill. Typically, one kilowatt hour is about 17 to 23 cents, which is approximately, and then one amp is approximately 0 0.1 or 0 0.012 of a kilowatt hour. So if you have one amp and it's running for one hour, it's going to cost you point. It's going to cost you like a tenth of a penny. However, if you're running something and it's taking a hundred amps, it's going to cost you about a dollar an hour which can really add up based on the appliances overall. Schmeekly was spending about uh, $4,500 to power this building before they put up the solar panels. After they put up the solar panels, it cut out a lot. They cut out 36% of admissions from the year, from like carbon emissions, and it, the equivalent of planting 150 trees. They also save 20% on top of that annually. Now Schmeekly wants to put up more solar panels to c reduce that cost even more. If they put up another sol solar panel like that one, they will increase the amount they can save by 52%. That is renewable energy that will always be used to and 52% of this building will be sustainable energy just from the sun. Now some things you can do at home, I'm not saying go out and buy a huge solar panel. Like, those are pretty expensive. Would it be nice and would it save you money in the long run, like the really long run? It would save you money like way down the road. However, we're gonna work on things that are a little bit more in home things you can do to help you save a couple dollars here and there. Can you can talk about it with your friends and just be like, hey, we're doing this, this is actually a lot of fun. Transitioning over to electrical things you can do in your home. So you got a refrigerator, right? You got a space heater or just a normal heater. I have a space heater because my room that I'm living in currently does not actually get heat. So. <laughs> I need a space heater to actually keep things unfrozen in my room. Because it's always funny if I don't turn it on and I wake up the next day and my glass of water sitting next to me has a layer of ice over the top of it. <laughs> so that can, get, that can be a little cold. But I, I went out with my buddy Mark and the electrician and took some pictures of the actual amperage and how old units compare to new, new units. You can see that this is my buddy's fridge. It runs at one amp when it's running. It runs at about one amp. The fridge at my house runs at 1.45 amps. Yours is older than that, right? Uh, my, yeah. The fridge in our house is approximately from 2015, 2016, and my buddy's house, his fridge is from 2019, 2020. We also went around and did the lights. The lights, there's a big difference in lights. 
My buddy's house has LED lights, which run at about 0.18 amps per hour. And my house runs at about, we use uh, incandescent lights, which are less energy savable, but they put off like a yellow light. LED lights are brighter, but they put off, yep, this is LED, this is incandescent. And they put out almost five times, incandescent lights put out almost five times the amount of power than LED lights. It's crazy when you think about that. That goes from paying like almost like 17 cents, a, no, it's two cents a day to power an incandescent light to power to paying like a fraction of that. Down, to, it's down to like a third of a penny a day for that, and you get a brighter light. Do you know how or, long you get a brighter light? What is what is the brightness coming from exactly? It's the way the light bulb is built. Okay. So an LED light, kind of like the lights through here, Schmeekly also has LED lights to help save money. The light bulb is constructed of a different material and has a different chemical in it, whereas incandescent lights have just a wire, and the wire heats up, which provides the glow. Some things I found going a power strip. Now a lot of people are like, power strips are great if you turn them off. Power strips are really great if you turn them off when you're not using everything. If you plug in multiple things into a power strip and just leave it on, it's always going to be drawing power. Unless you have a specialized power strip, strip marked to actually say it, it will turn off if it is not being used. A power strip will use 0 .08 of an amp. A very, very tiny amount, but that is always running. There is always power being drawn there. And each time you plug in another power strip, or another plug into the outlet, that power goes up. It'll keep going up and keep going up and keep going up the more appliances you have plugged into that power strip. Most power strips come with a little switch on them mm -hmm. that you can just flip and it completely turns off the power. That will actually turn off and it, none of that, those appliances will be drawing power from that power strip anymore. So a way you could do this is have a bunch of power strips plugged into outlets, not overloading your breaker, of course, so don't have 10 power strips in the same room because <laughs> that would overload your breaker and blow everything up. And it would not be great because then you got to call an electrician to come in and fix all that. <laughs> and but, the fire department. And the fire, possibly the fire department. But if you just flip that switch, it'll turn off all those appliances and you will save that 0.08 of an amp. It doesn't sound like much, but that is running 24-7, 365 if it is plugged in and is on. And there are things plugged into the outlet. Now we get into the garage portion of it. <laughs> Using an air compressor. Leaving an air compressor plugged in draws 11.58. Amps. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret of turning it yeah. off. Does it have a deep? Usually, air compressors will have a decompression valve on them, so the air will slowly leak out and then it'll refill, slowly leak out and refill. I'll just shut the whole thing off. Yeah, if you unplug it and take it off, like it's not going to run at all. All you do is disconnect that. You got a power switch. I just. Turn it off so it ain't going to run. Yep, that, that, that'll that, work that, perfectly that, fine. If there's still power going to it. But it just don't run? Yeah, it don't run. Okay. I got a, an air stage in it. So then we'll just turn it, uh, when I need it, I just turn the thing back on and so we run it. Yeah, okay. I, don't really, I don't need everything you got in our garage is just the heater. <laughs> that much. Yep. Everything is really turned off or on plug. Back home, my dad, this was my dad's big one. Because my dad left his air compressor plugged in all the time and it would just kick on randomly throughout the day and just. Yeah, and he used it for milking. That ran the milk. Yeah. So he had to have it on. For certain times. Other times it was just like 
that's not power, that's not going towards the milker, that's the other air compressor. That, you're, that, you don't need to fill up a tire every single day oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I'm you, just thinking you need it for the milker. Yeah, certain things, yes, you need to leave electricity on for. Refrigerators, you can't do much about that. You need to keep your food cold. Yes. However, updating your appliances and having newer things that are more sustainable will really help lower that cost. And for the last one, we have TVs. <laughs> These draw 0.1. Powering a TV with like a dish, I don't know if you have dish or a Roku or what people have at home, but powering any of that will constantly draw 0.1 because they have little lights on them, like the bottom of the TV mm -hmm. light and all of that. So one of the recommendations I have for this is just having everything plugged into a power strip and just flip the switch instead of turning off your TV or turning off the Roku at the same time. You just go flip the switch and flip the switch back on, it'll turn right back on and you can use it again. That way, using that switch instead of using the remotes and the buttons and all that, you still gotta turn it on, you still gotta turn it off. This is just a different way to turn on and off different things that can help you save money. So you don't run all your idiot lights. Yep, so you don't run all the tiny little lights or your, your TV goes into power saving mode and then it's black so you think the TV's turned off, but then it's actually drawing additional power because the TV's in power, or it's called power save mode, but it just turns the screen black, where it's still running everything in the background, so it's still drawing power. So when you push on, it comes on right away, instead mm -hmm. of warming up everything. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the part where we're gonna do a little activity, and we're gonna do a little bit of a drawing. <laughs> Could be a little fun. I will also be drawing with everyone. But we're going to go through, and we're going to draw a little house, oh, there's a little house already drawn in here. And then you go around, you want to take a handful of crayons. city water, the water prices are going up. So one thing you can do to help lower those costs are do at home like water barrels and collecting like natural water to help mitigate those things. When you brush your teeth, to making sure we're turning off the water in between each we're really getting old then. <laughs> I'm going back to the 30s. I don't want to be out of it. <laughs> Sometimes going backwards is not that bad. It's not. When, anymore, anyway. when we were, like, say, two, three hundred years ago, they had to live off the land. They had to use those water sources. Now we got so technologi technologically advanced that we're starting to forget that this is still the world, this is where we live. This is what we need to survive. We can't just live off robotics and any and everything. We need water, and once water goes bad, then we're gonna be struggling. Oh, 
quite a bit. This so what I'd like you to draw on there is things you could do to save water. Example, maybe draw a rain barrel. Maybe have somebody in the house turning off the water. Not leaving the water run, not taking 20, 30 minute showers, taking like five to 10 minute showers. You don't need to stand there and wait for the water to warm up and the steam to come pouring out of the shower because you take such hot showers and then get into the shower. The water's already gonna be warm. So you might as well get in the warm water rather than waiting for the room to warm up to get in the shower. I know I did that one. Start taking GI showers and then you uh, yeah. <laughs> being on a farm if you uh, work with old pumps like that. The little hand pumps, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Hand no. Little ones or big ones? Uh, we yeah. had a we had a big one for the animals next to the the cow trough that we put the water in for the cows to drink. We had big ones. So we went out there, we pumped that one. Then we had a smaller one for like watering the garden, and that all came actually from a pond, like close to a pond okay. by us. And we'd use that water to help water the plants, water the garden, water the water the cows, or give cows drinking water. So you had a pitcher pump and a whole flood. Did you ever have a, your mom and dad must have had a pitcher pump in a house. We, my grandma and grandpa had one. Yeah, my, my grandma and grandpa did. My my parents' house we had a well. So the well we'd just be able to turn on the sink and the water would come right from the well. We didn't really have that at my parents' house. So we were getting a little modern. Then. Yeah, we were getting a little modern. <laughs> my parents' house was actually built by my great great grandpa. Okay. So and they haven't done any updating in that. And I actually talked to them uh, a couple months ago and I'm helping them renovate their house and update appliances and everything in it. Well, you, you probably find a lot of old stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Well, there ain't no insulation in the walls. So. That's all just pressed down. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I know the, I know the routine. <laughs> Another thing we can do to save water is buy water, like water air couplings. They go on the bottom of faucets and they actually oxygenate your water. They, it still puts out the same, almost the same amount of water, the same amount of pressure, but it uses less water. It's weird. So there, there are little pieces that you can buy and put on the bottom of your faucet, and it just makes your water come out in a stream instead of like a straight big line. You ever see those where like, if you go to Walmart, you go to a local store, you see how the water comes out in like 10 different streams? or 20 different streams and then other faucets, you open it and it comes out as just one solid like flowing water, like it's coming out of a hose. Those air filtration pieces actually use less water but provide the same amount of pressure so you can get the same result for using less water. Like if you're filling up a bucket, it's gonna take a little longer because you're using less water and you're actually filling it up. But if you're brushing your teeth, you're gonna save water because not as much water is coming out but you're still gonna get the same result. I actually took some water from, this is not actually from me brushing my teeth, but I used the same, the same sink and showed all the water that I collected when I did not turn off the water from brushing my teeth. This is all the water that came out of the faucet when I was brushing my teeth and I did not turn off the water. Wow, that's a get over a gallon. Yep, usually, Usually it's about a gallon to a gallon and a half of water if you brush your teeth for the right amount of time and you do not turn off the water the entire time. However, if you do turn off the water, you use about this much through brushing your teeth. And this is even a little much because I like to like really scrub my toothbrush to make sure I get everything out of it. And then I like to rinse out my mouth. So you're down to a quarter. Quarter of what you got over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Little, maybe even a little under a quarter. Like yeah. it's, it mitigates it a lot. Yeah. This is one big thing you can do to save water. You, I don't think people realize how much water you can waste just by brushing your teeth. How are the pictures coming? Were the Navy? I, I was on 
two views. Okay, I'm um, 50 years. Okay. The, yeah, I was on yeah, two ships. I was on two different ships. Okay. Troop carriers for the ships. Yeah. They were but already had boys that went down and drive out and when you go, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I'm getting at is they pushed real hard water saving, correct? Yes, they do. They press water saving. Like, if you're in the service and you go on a ship, they press saving as much water as possible because they can only bring so much water with them. So, if you bring all the water you want, you've got a whole ocean out there. They can't. I know what they can't do. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we <laughs> can't really filter. Like, hey, you have as much water out there as you want, but nah. <laughs> I wouldn't really use it. So, were you on a diesel powered German? German ship or do you want steam driven? Those are steam turbines, I would assume. I feel like they were. They were. I was on so the USS Wasp. That doesn't mean anything to me. Oh. Uh, it just use. means that if you're on steam driven, they can. The, the distilling system is designed to keep the boilers with salt free water. You run salt free water into your boiler on an aircraft carrier or the big boys. Uh, They'll make it from maybe California to Hawaii, and that's the end of it. You just gotta work, still wait. Salt crows all that stuff and it gets in the steam. But if you got still a diesel turbine system, you don't need that much water, but you're not purifying as much either because you have to get a purifier for him, his crew. So you have to ration it very strictly because the steam has to be made you got to get aircraft in the air if you're an aircraft carrier, or you're going to get the props to turn. Then we were definitely the second one. We were definitely the turbine base. Yeah. We needed to conserve water. Like there was weeks it was like, all right, well, shower every other day. Yeah, for you, not for me. <laughs> I was a cook. Oh. We did clean clothes and we did yeah. showers every day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nobody yeah. wants you to be a cook. Yeah, we got told to shower every other day. We got told, all right, don't flush the toilets, don't flush the urinals, yep. wait for like two, three times, and then flush them. Yep. It was, don't drink the water, have your own water, or go to the kitchen and get some other source of beverage that we brought. <laughs> it was, certain times got really rough. Yes. So a lot of the stuff you and I and other people have done that you forget about it, you, mm -hmm. when and you then you run another issue of water. When you get into foreign countries, you have other issues with water. <laughs> it's not safe to drink. No, it's really not. So we covered what we covered saving water and how beneficial it can actually be to the environment. It can protect lakes, rivers, it can provide drinking water for many years to come. And it can help the next generations realize, like, hey, this is the problem we had growing up, we learn from it, and we can adapt to it, and we can overcome and find a new way to do things. Way back in the day, you think, hmm, what's what's something way back in the day we used to think badly about, but now it doesn't matter? Can anyone give me anything? A lot of things you thought badly about 50 years ago. Like? All kinds of, I mean, Things you don't worry about now, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know what all they were. Just I can't even like. There's a, there's so many other you just you can think of them, but you just can't even depict them. It's just like, well, why didn't we switch to this? People don't really like change too much. Like you like things the way they were. You like things how you're comfortable using them. However, in this day and age, we're gonna tr we try and push for the new generation of things to come out because they're healthy. The world is changing to a more, let's protect the world than let's see how far we can get in the world. Because the world is slowly dying, but it's also getting a lot better. It is not 6.1 Earths anymore. With, it's really not. The day I can show you right now. Well, obviously it's not 6.1 because we'd be gone. It, yep. We would be gone. Well, what would be here, we wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. 
So what that means, though, is the whole mess of the world is suffering where we're not. Correct? Well, yep. We can actually look okay. at this map right here. This right here is actually a map of what people average in there. The red zones are where they average five Earths approximately. So we got, oh. So we got the United States, Mexico, they average around five Earths. But then if you look at South, Af or South America, a little bit of Africa, they're actually doing very well. Their average worlds for there are actually under one. Most people there are not, especially in South Africa, are not a first world country. They're more third world, and they have to live off the land up there. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's not a choice. It's really not. <laughs> like, it's not a choice, but still, they're a lot more environmentally friendly which is what the world's trying toward, to work towards by saving energy and making the world last as long as possible. One day I really hope that we can, every, every one of these places will be green because we'll be using only renewable resources. We'll be using solar panels, better appliances for electricity. All houses will be updated and capable. Now this could take a very, very long time. Like, solar panels are expensive. They're, the, the one out there was about $32,000. Now, that's to power this entire building. To power something in your house, you'd only need about half of that to actually power something. That right there, an average house on a, a monthly basis puts out about 800 kilowatt hours. That's what the reading on your meter will say is per month is about 800. It'll go up by air somewhere around there. A solar panel per month, depending on how much sun is out and the time of the season, can generate anywhere from seven to 16 kilowatts an hour, depending on the sun. This could drastically change your electrical bill. And it's something, if you got it, like if you got some money sitting around, <laughs> invest. It would increase the price of your house outstandingly because you could put that in there and be like, hey, this is going to save the environment and it's going to save you a lot of money. And it'll be a really unique item attached to your house that will attract a lot of buyers, especially this day and age, people who are looking for these things, people who are looking to have updated appliances and be able to help the environment. I hope you learned a thing or two from today, and you go home, look at your house, and just be like, could this be plugged in? Does this need to be plugged in all the time, or can we plug in the power strip and just flip the power strip and turn it off? Do I really need this water running while I brush my teeth? Do I need to take a 20, 30 minute shower? Or can I just take a shorter one? <laughs> <laughs> Another thing we had to do on ship is when we showered, we had to turn the water on, yeah. shower, turn the water off, shampoo, mm -hmm. turn the water on, rinse off, turn the water off, and get out. Yeah. Did that at Girl Scout camp. Girl Scout camp, we had to do that too. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're a farm boy, so you should have been used to that. Oh, yeah. It didn't bother me at all. It was just entertaining because it's like all these rules of water, and it really got me thinking like, this is weird, but also, and I, I understand it. And now we're getting to this day and age where it's like, oh, we're conserving water, we're doing this. Now I have all these ideas in my mind. It's like, oh, well, this is the way we conserve water, this way, this way, and this way. And I'm like, I never thought of that. Like, huh, that's weird. You learn things here and there, you pick up on different things, and sometimes you just forget them until something sparks your interest about it. And now something pops in your brain, like, oh, I remember that. And then you know in the last five years around Forge County, and I know Chloe's big into it. All the new homes have to have those kind of faucets and they have to have LED lighting for the... What you do with your lamps that you put on a table or on the floor, 
is your own business. But that uh, overhead last time. The over, anything that's recessed in a, in, a, in a closet, and you're gonna have lights in closets. Right. Making it be LEDs? They're making it be low energy, you know, whatever is low. And they, all the faucets are, plumbers are being encouraged. Hmm. Now, I don't know if there's a law, but they're being encouraged, and that's what they're putting in, probably the last five years at least. They have been doing that for now, quite a while. In some old places, they're trying to save the water, the city water, so they don't have to drill another well and do all of that. You know, it's not just you saving, it's the city, like Stevens Point or Globe or whatever. Mm -hmm. It helps them in the long run. You build another hundred homes and they use a lot less wet water. Now, cities are trying to do everything they can to help out but you should also try and do things at home to even further that. Just because the city's doing something, they're doing it for the helpfulness of everyone, you can still build on top of that and even make your home even more sustainable, which will in turn save you more money than everyone else just saving money by using the city. I really hope you enjoyed this presentation, you learned something, you had fun, you take home your drawings, hang them up on the fridge, have a little laugh. <laughs> put, the, put the pictures on your fridge so it can remind you, oh, when you're leaving, you walk by your fridge, oh, I didn't turn off the power strip. This picture could be a reminder for that when it's on your fridge. I'm in. Oh, I need to go turn off the power strip quick. Turn off the power strip, come back in, and yeah. there we go. Good idea.